by definition of a mobile network, I can be anywhere in the network. How can data packets be transmitted to my terminal to the cell where I am? This is the question we are going to answer in this video. To understand this question, we need to go back to IP networks. An IP network is firstly an interconnection of different subnetworks represented by different colors in this slide. A subnetwork is characterized by a prefix. Each machine is necessarily on a subnetwork and its address is composed of a prefix which is specific to that subnetwork and an interface identifier or ID. Each IP packet that is transferred from one machine to another one has both a source address and a destination address. Both addresses contain the prefix and the interface ID. Inside an interconnection network, for instance, the internet, only the prefix is used for routing. In our example, prefix 2 is analyzed to route the packet towards the correct subnetwork. If we consider mobile networks, we have a problem when a machine is moved from one subnetwork, for instance, subnetwork 2, to subnetwork 1. The designers of mobile systems, when they standardized 4G networks, decided to associate a prefix to the packet gateway. So, when I consult a server, for instance, I watch an excellent video on 4G networks on my smartphone, the packets created by the server contain the destination address of my mobile terminal, that is, the UE IP address, which includes a prefix specific to the packet gateway. This IP packet is thus simply routed towards the packet gateway. When we want to transmit the packet to the correct terminal, we will first transmit it to the serving gateway, placing it in another IP packet. This IP packet will have the IP address of the serving gateway as its destination address. The IP packet is then routed from the P gateway to the serving gateway. Putting one IP packet in another IP packet is called encapsulation. The same encapsulation principle is used between the serving gateway and the inode B. Here, we will have the IP address of the inode B as its destination address. On the radio interface, as we saw in week 3, the user's IP packet is put in a transport block. This transport block is sent to a specific RNTI for radio network temporary identifier that corresponds to the mobile terminal. Let's look again at what happens at the core of a 4G network. Between the serving gateway and the packet gateway, we have an IP network made of different routers. Independently of the interconnection of these routers, placing the IP packet intended for the terminal in another IP packet that contains the address of the serving gateway means that this IP packet is routed automatically 
to the serving gateway. So, every packet that leaves the packet gateway is sent towards the serving gateway. In other words, we have a mechanism that acts like a tunnel, a mandatory passage, so to speak, between the packet gateway and the serving gateway. You won't be surprised that we call this principle tunneling. The same principle is used between the serving gateway and the inert B. We have therefore a second tunnel. And then transmission on the radio interface. In a few words, to make it clear, IP packets that should be transmitted to a mobile terminal are systematically routed to the P gateway. They are then put in other IP packets within the 4G core network. This operation is called encapsulation. These packets are transmitted hop by hop to the terminal as if they were in a tunnel from the P gateway to the S gateway and from the S gateway to the inner B where the mobile is.